naming alkynes, it's going to be the topic in this first lesson on a whole chapter dedicated to alkynes. And we'll find out that this chapter kind of follows a pattern for future chapters throughout the second semester topics in organic chemistry. And we're going to devote an entire chapter to a functional group. We'll learn how to name it, some basic physical properties, how to synthesize compounds with that functional group, and then all the different reactions associated with that functional group. And same pattern is going to follow here. We're first going to name alkynes, then we're going to learn uh, a key physical property of alkynes, how to make alkynes, and then all the different reactions of alkynes as well. This lesson is part of my new organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss a lesson or any of my future playlists, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification, you'll be notified every time I post a new lesson. All right, so let's name some alkynes here. And uh, we'll find out a similar pattern to naming alkenes in a couple of respects. And you want to find, first find your longest continuous carbon chain that the alkyne is a part of. So in this first example here, obviously the entire chain is part of that alkyne. And uh, in this case, what's nice about alkynes co as compared to alkenes is there's no such thing as cis and trans. If you notice, the, the carbons in the alkyne are sp hybridized, so the bond angles are 180. And so there's not two different geometries like cis and trans even possible. So nothing we have to worry about. There's no E and Z, there's no cis and trans, nothing of that sort. And also be very careful on how you draw an alkyne with the angles being 180 here. So you want to make sure, you know, oftentimes when we draw these things, you start by drawing the triple bond first and then make sure the bonds coming off it come off at 180 degrees. A mistake a lot of students make if they try to draw this with one, two, three, four, five, six carbons is they just do what we've done with alkanes and alkenes and they just draw six carbons and then they just shove a triple bond into the middle of it. And if you notice that just kind of looks terrible because it's obvious that these angles are not 180 and oftentimes professors will take a half a point off on a test if you draw an alkyne like this. So by all means don't do that. A little word to the wise, so, but let's name this thing. So the longest continuous carbon chain that the triple bond is a part of and number it to give the alkyne the lowest possible number. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, numbering it left to right. And the alkyne is between positions two and three. And just like with alkenes, you give it the designation of the lower of the two numbers. And so in this case, this is hex dash two dash so we use the suffix Y-N-E for alkynes. So if the alkyne is the only functional group named as part of the parent chain, then you actually put the number out in front as well. So you could have also named this as, give myself some room here, 2-hexine as well. We'll find out later on, uh, in fact, we'll find out pretty shortly, if you've got more than one function group that is named as part of the parent chain, which is not super common, but it does happen, uh, then you can't put the numbers out in front of the parent chain. You're gonna have to put them in the middle of the parent chain. Uh, so not the worst thing to kind of get used to doing that anyways, but you probably should recognize it either way. All right, so what if you have both an alkyne and an alkene in the same molecule? So you'll find out that we've got a whole bunch of different functional groups we're gonna learn to name over the course of these two semesters of OCHEM, and there's a priority. And you find out based on this priority, you can decide which one becomes part of the parent chain, and then oftentimes you'll find out the other one gets named as part of the uh, substituents out in front of the parent chain. But with alkenes and alkynes, they can both show up in the parent chain at the same time, and you call it an enine. So you get both the ene and the ine here. So, and it turns out though, that which one gets the priority is not set. It actually determines, is determined numerically first. If the alkene can get the lower number, the alkene gets the priority. If the alkyne can get the lower number, then the alkyne gets the priority. And if it's a tie, we'll find out, like it'll be on this last one, we'll find out that the alkene gets the priority on the tiebreaker. All right, so in this case, longest chain that contains both the alkene and the alkyne is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. So this is going to be some form of hexenine, so hexenine. And in this case, if I number it left to right the chain, I'll see the alkene at carbon two. If I start from the right-hand side though, I'll see the alkyne at carbon one. That's lower numerically and that's gonna be the preference here. So whichever one you can get a lower number is gonna get the priority. All right, so we see the alkyne is at position one and the alkene is at position five. And don't forget that anytime you name an alkene, you should check for E and Z. But in this case, the sp2 carbon on the left-hand side here is bonded to two identical methyl groups. And once again, if either side's bonded to two identical groups, no E and Z, no cis and trans isomers possible. It only exists in one way. So we don't have to worry about that in this case. So, but in this case, we also have this substituent right here. And we'll name the substituents first, just like normal. And we'll start off with six, methyl. So, and in this case, because the ene and the ine are going to both appear in the parent name, the numbers have to go in the middle of the parent name. So six methyl and then hept 
for seven carbons. And then ene comes before ein, and so it's at position five. So hept dash five dash ene. And we'll drop the e since we're about to say ein. We don't want vowel vowel combinations uh, in the parent chain here. So hept five ene dash one dash ein. Cool, and there's our lovely name, 6-methyl-hept-5-ene-1-ein. And again, because there's two major functions showing up in the parent chain, the numbers have to go in the middle of the parent chain. They, you couldn't pull them out in front of the hept. It would not work. All right, so finally, this last one. So if I number this left to right, so the alkene would be at position one. If I go right to left, the alkyne would be at position one, and that's when there's a numerical tie. And in this case, if there's a numerical tie, the alkene gets the priority, not the alkyne, just the way they decided it. So we'll number this left to right as a result. All right, and so in this case, there are no substituents. Everything's contained as part of the parent chain, and it's five carbons. So we'll start with pent. So, and in this case, again, en first. So pent dash one dash en dash four dash ein. So, and in this case, again, anytime you name an alkene, you should check for E and Z. But once again, they weren't drawn in, but the left-hand sp2 carbon of the alkene was bonded to two identical hydrogens. So there is no such thing as E and Z to worry about. And that is our complete name for this last one, pent one en four ein. If you have found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? A couple of the best things you can do to help support the channel. And if you're looking for practice problems or the 168 page set of study guides that goes with my premium course, check it out on chadsprep.com.